Thank you, Chair. Uh, Leader, I would like to second the amendment to the order of business today. At this stage, there isn't anyone here who doesn't know what's happening in Iran. Thousands of people are being interrogated, unfairly prosecuted, persecuted and arbitrarily detained solely for peacefully exercising their human rights and hundreds remain unjustly imprisoned. Torture or other ill treatment, including denying prisoners adequate medical care, remain widespread and systemic. Judicial punishments of flogging, amputations and blinding are being imposed. The death penalty is being used as a weapon of repression and executions carried out after unfair trials. This week, the Royal Navy intercepted a boatload of Iranian missiles and drones being smuggled to Yemen, proving that Iran is breaching UN Security Council resolution on drones and missiles. Iran has used boats and a state-owned airline to smuggle new types of advanced long-range armed drones to Russia for use in its war on Ukraine. Just yesterday, the BBC reported that one of the world's most promising chess players, 25-year-old Sarah Kadim, decided to play at an international tour tournament without her headscarf in solidarity with the protest movement in Iran. She cannot return to Iran. To Iran. There were arrest papers issued for her and they are awaiting for her. And she now lives in exile in southern Spain with her husband and one-year-old son. In a defiant speech on Tehran's Azidi Square on uh, 11th of February, President Ibrahim Raisi claimed nationwide anti-government protest movements have now been defeated. The authorities have cracked down hard on the widespread protests demanding more freedom and women's rights. Security forces have killed more than 520 people, including dozens of children, and detained over 18,000 activists, say. Following unlawful detentions and biased trials, the judiciary has handed down stiff sentences to protests. And yet, amid all of this, Ireland is set to reopen the embassy in Tehran before the year is out. What message does that send to the world about Ireland and our values? Ireland now sits on the UN Security Council and played a key role in facilitating the 2015 deal struck with Iran's nuclear programme. Are we now to turn a blind eye at Iran's support for Russian atrocities in Ukraine and to Iran's own human rights violations at home? So today I'm looking for your support, Leader, uh, on this. Thank you. Senator Keoghan, as I said, uh, I'm happy to accept the amendment who raised, I spoke about the issues in Iran. And just to concur, Senator, with the remarks you've made, I mean, I, I myself have, have, have also spoken about this, this, this issue in this chamber and the significant and severe human rights abuses and what women and girls are facing in that country is reprehensible. And I think we can all agree on that, absolutely. And it's important that we keep that issue alive and consistently debate that issue in this House and raise those issues. So thank you for putting that information on the record of the House today.